Hello everybody. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I hope we're all doing fine. I hope we've all had a nice day. I hope our days are going okay. Um, yes, you're welcome to my platform. I welcome you, I welcome you, I welcome you. I look forward to everything that we're going to be discussing today. Um, yes, um, we've been talking about God is not interested in your seed. So yes, I look forward to everything that we're going to be talking about today. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be continuing our topic on God is not interested in seed. So God is not interested in your seeds. God is not interested in your plant, in your seeds the, that you give via money. God is not interested in, in those things. Hello, Mr. Donatus. Hello, you're welcome to the platform. I welcome you to the platform. If you're here, please say hello so I can welcome you, so I can greet you, so I can call out your name. I welcome in in Jesus' name. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome, Mr. Ov. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you, Sister Matilda. Thank you for joining the platform. Thank you, Mr. Kins. Thank you for being here. Um, thanks for joining. Um, we're going to be talking about God is not interested in your seed today. Okay. Um, I hope everyone knows what seed is by now. You know, we've broken it down already. The first day, the second day, and you know, now looking at it again. Seed in terms of money. In terms of giving something to God with the hope of getting something back, you know, God is not interested in that sort of transaction. God is not a, he is not a, um, he is not a, how do you say it, um, babalawo, nor is he a genie, nor is he a, um, how do you say, he's not a, a, he's not a gambling game. He's not some a slot machine that you put something into with the hope that something bigger would come out of. That's not how God works. So yes, we are going to be talking about that topic today. Continue our topic on God is not interested in seeds today. So I welcome you to the platform. Mr. Stanley, Mr. B.A., you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. I welcome you. If you're here, please say hello so I can greet you, okay? I'm going to be continuing our topic. Okay, so God is not interested in your seeds. We've looked at today. We're going to be looking at a few videos, and we look at um, we look at Bab, um, you know, some Bible verses as well, just so that we can understand genuinely. Like I had to bring the Bible verses into it so that we can really break it down from the scriptures and understand that this is not a personal, you know, it's not a personal vendetta against somebody. It's not about what somebody thinks. You know, I've I've you know had a few messages since I started this topic on God is not interested in seeds. People come in and telling me to be careful. And you know, and the funny sad, sad, sad reality is the person that had that message to me and wrote that I should be careful. The f funny thing I want to say is to them is that for me to be careful of who exactly, that they will kill me, <laughs> that I should be careful so that I don't die. I mean, that person is telling me to be careful, okay? So, you've got to write to someone to be careful that they might kill them. Okay, who is going to kill me? These people that you call men of God, right? They are the ones that you're telling me to be scared of, that they might kill me. Now, if they're capable of doing something like that, and you know of it and you're well aware, then why exactly are you still calling them and referring to them as men of God? Isn't that enough understanding? Isn't that enough reality for you to understand that these are no men of God? You're, if someone can call me and tell me, oh, I should be careful of what I say. You know, we're going to look at a Bible verse today that helps you to understand why it is okay to call out these men of God and to talk to them and to help you understand that I am equally as important as this, as this people you call men and women of God, okay? We're going to look at a few videos today, and we're going to get that to that, okay? Hello, Mr. Shala. I welcome you to the platform. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope everyone's had a nice day. Okay, so let's get down to topic. The other day, I'm just going to do a quick um, run-through of what we did the other day. The other day, we looked at where tithes came from. You know, we looked at um, Deuteronomy. We talked about, um, you know, about... Um, the tithe was actually given initially it was a mosaic covenant you know it was between the children of israel and it was god said to the children of israel when they came out you know gone to the promise, um, promised land and they shared the lands they shared the portions of the land god said that the levites the tribes of the levites the children of you know um you know the descendants of of the levites they should not um, get any portion of the sharings, you know, in, you know, on the land. And because they didn't get any of the portion, the God said that the tithe was to be paid to them as an inheritance. So now let me tell you something. The tithe is not just a random thing that you do. The tithe was actually their inheritance. So for a pastor, so now God has said that these children of Israel should pay this to 
the Levite as their own inheritance, their own portion, because they didn't get a certain portion. Now, let us fast forward to Malachi chapter 3, verses 10, where uh, Malachi was talking to the priest and he was saying to them that, you know, you, it says that, bring you all tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, let me explain what that, who that Bible verse was talking to. Now, that was God, um, sorry, that was uh, Malachi speaking to the priest because now, let me tell you how it worked with the tithe. At the time, the children of Israel would give the Levites, the Levites' children, you they will give them a you know a portion the tent of their yieldings of actually what they actually would yield and then when they yield when you know the things that they would you know maybe their farm their their animals their you know their produce whatever it is they would give them a tent now the levites were supposed to take a tent of that tent and then take it into a storehouse. Now, the storehouse was where the widows, the children, the needy, everybody that needed something would go to collect something. They would go there. Now, they, that was that was just it. That was it. And then, you know, at the time when Jesus came, the Levites were still existing at the time. That's why Jesus was saying to them, um, the Pharisees, that they would play their, their um, tithes in cumin. It's cool. But the Levites are no longer in existence today. They are gone. They all, the, that whole tribe is gone. So we're not supposed to pay tithes anymore. We're not supposed to be sowing. And we're not even Jesus himself, who was not, he wasn't of, you know, he was from the tribe of Judah. He didn't take anything. He didn't ask for any tithes to be paid for. He didn't ask for that because he didn't need that. None of the disciples, no, not Paul, none of them, John, nobody ever spoke about tithes. Because there was no need to, because it would be criminal to take it. Because for you to pay it, you have to be from the children of Israel. Now, if you have to receive it, you have to be from the tribe of... So you have to be an Israelite to pay it. And then if you have to take it, you have to be a Levite to collect it. Because it was their inheritance. They had to collect it. And it would be a sin to, to, to not pay it to them. Then it would be a sin to collect it if you are not... It would be like, for example, an Israelite to go and pose as a, as a Levite. And say, I want to collect this tithe that they are paying. It will be a sin because you already have a portion of the inheritance given to you. Now, if you need something and you don't have, let's say you not, you can go to the storehouse and go and collect something. That's how it works. Simple case closed. That was just it. We tight and tighten end and it died there. But the, the people that we have today have been teaching the thing is, the thing is, if you don't understand the word of God very well, the word of God will be easily twisted. People will literally twist the word, twist the word of God, and then pitch it to you and give it to you to eat. They will give it to you and tell you this is what the word of God says. But that's not the word, that's not what the word of God says. We can see clearly here in the book of, um, what's it called, um, where is it again? You know, in the book of um, Numbers chapter 20, um, uh, what's it called? That God was saying to them that they should give this tithe. Deuteronomy chapter 20, sorry. Deuteronomy 18 all the way to 20. Deuteronomy 18, 21 to 24. If you want to read it, go and read it. All this, that was for the children of, that was for the children of Israel and, you know, and the Levites to know what to do. And in Malachi, that was simply for the Levites. Finished. That's it. Case closed. Now, if we have all of this information and we're not reading it, the pastors are reading it and they are using it to, they're twisting it and they're using it to tell you that this is what you should do. Then it's just a shame because they're just making God look bad. Even Jesus that was the son of God did not boast. He didn't come boasting. He kept saying, I'm the son of man. I'm son of man. And these pastors, they have literally turned themselves into God. And like I said, we are going to read, um, you know, a Bible verse today. Okay. So let's just read the Bible verse. Um, we're going to read Numbers chapter 20. And we're going to read everything actually. We're going to read the whole of Numbers chapter 20 because I want us to really understand that it's okay to call these people to correction. And you have to understand how I am and how God views me in the sight of God. Now, this is what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 20, verses 1. It says that the kingdom, the parable of the works is in the vineyard. It says the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is the kingdom of heaven. This is how God sees us. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into the vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard. I will pay you whatever is right. That's what he said. So they went. He went out again about noon and three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out, you know, and did the same. Just bear with me. 
uh, just took it down. Okay, about five in the afternoon, went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day? You know, and then they said, you know, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Um, when evening comes, the owner of the vineyard said to, to his foreman, call the workers and pay them the wages, beginning with the last the last one hired and going to the first. The workers um, who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when um, those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. They, this who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have, you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he said unto them, I am not being unfair to you, friends. Did you agree to work for ordinaries? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who, has hired, who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do with what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. See, let me tell you something about God, yeah? In the kingdom of God, there is no Baba. There is no Baba Deboye. Let me tell you, the list, the cleaner in that church, and Baba Deboye, in God's side, they are the same. That's how the kingdom of God is. In the kingdom of God, there is no Baba anything. There is no my father. There is nothing like that. God don't see that. There is everybody is equal in the sight of God. In the sight of God, we are all the same. So when somebody comes out to correct another, the Bible tells us to judge. Is it the book of Matthew chapter 7? It tells us in 24 that you should judge what is right. So you're supposed to know what is right. You're supposed to be able to say, nah, nah, this, this ain't right. You're supposed to, is it Proverbs 31, 9 as well that tells us to judge the good, judge good, the good things or something like that. I will look for it and read it for us. You know, you're supposed to look at this. You're supposed to discern amongst you what is wrong and what is right and call it out. You're supposed to be able to call things out. You don't, you don't sit around. You, don't, you can't just see things are wrong and say because one person is Baba, he has been there since morning. He has been there since morning. He has been there since morning. So what? In the sight of God, that is nothing. In the sight of God, they are equal. They both get one denarius each. Simple. Case closed. That person that came at night, that young child and that old Baba, they are the same. There's no, there's no culture. In God. God don't have culture. God don't do religion. God don't do your traditions. That's yours. It's you people that insist you want to be traditional. In God's, in God's kingdom, there's no such thing as our Baba. Everybody is equal. Equality. There's no, um, this person is older than this person. So that needs to go out of the window. Now, we're going to continue. So it says that, so the last will be first. And the first will be last. And that's how Jesus described the kingdom of God. Now, let's continue. It says, Jesus predicts his own death here. It says, now, I don't actually need to read that part. Um, we'll just read to a mother's request. I'll read it anyway, because just three verses. It says, now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took 12 aside and said to them, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered um, over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and they hand him over to Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will raise to life. And then 20 says, the mother of Zebedee's son, now this is the part I want us to really understand. It says, the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus with her sons and kneeled down and asked the favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, grant that that one of these two of my of two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in the kingdom. You don't know what you ask, Jesus said to her. Come, um, can you drink the same cup as I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those, to those whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the, the, the two brothers. Jesus called them and, and, and together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles, now this is the part, the, the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them, not so with you. Now this is for people who want to pretend that they are leaders. Those people you are calling your baba and your mama, this, is, this part 
is for them. This is the part they forgot to read in their Bible when they were doing our Baba and our Mama. You cannot correct us. You cannot call us out. Now, this is the part of the Bible they have failed to have read to you. And they didn't read it before they took place of power. Now, someone don't read this part and is pretending that he's a pastor. Then he has failed. He has already failed even before he began. Now, it says here that not so with you. Instead, it says not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. See, now Jesus, people are, I'm tired, I'm, I'm tired of fake, these so-called fake pastors, these pastors that they actually pretend as if they are men of God. What we have been having, what we have thought here is a lot of Concussion. It's like somebody has cooked concussion and pretended that it's jollof rice. You know the real taste of jollof now. And you know what concussion tastes like. That's how it is. What they have been feeding and people have been thinking that it's true all this while is just fake. They are not of God. They have nothing to do with God. They are literally not God's teachings. They are not, they're not God's teachings. You know, um, I was reading something that Chris Ojubani said. He says that um, it is wrong doctrine. It's actually a sin to pay your tithes. He says it's equally a sin to receive it. He said a misinterpreted, a misinterpretation of a scripture can lead many generations astray. In like manner, the misinterpretation of tight, re tight related scriptures has led many Christian generations astray. Before explaining the true meaning of, you know, this for me, yeah, is it just shows me that a lot of people. It's not their fault. We're not reading. If we don't read, a lot of people that have come and they are attacking, they're telling me to be careful, though. I should be careful. You know, I just realized about them, they're so, they're so sad. Because most of them, yeah, it's like they're coming and saying, we know it's true, but don't say it. They're like, be, be, be careful to say the truth. How can you be careful to say what is true in the sight of God? Who exactly am I afraid of? The truths that I'm speaking of is the truth of the scripture which is given to all man to explore for which God told us that we are unequal in, in God's sight. Just as we have read in Matthew chapter 20. So who exactly should man be scared of? This is not the same Bible that tells us to not be afraid of man that can only, def they can only destroy your flesh. Be afraid of God who can destroy both your spirit and your soul in hell. Be, be, get, be afraid of God. It is God that you need to be concerned about. What God thinks of you. If you are concerned about what man thinks, you can never fulfill your purpose in this world. That's why Jesus said, can you drink from the same cup that I will drink from? A lot of people think it's like a bad joke that you're standing out and you're saying the truth. No, no, no. Jesus stood out for the truth and they killed him. They, ki they literally slaughtered him. Now, let me tell you, that's how it is. The people are not ready for the truth. They want to continue to live in their lies. And the thing is, the sad thing is, those that will discover the truth, they'll continue to, someone will come and continue to try and silence them. But the thing is, you can't silence the truth forever. And the day the truth will finally come out here, yeah? the number of lives that will be lost. Because people will come out out of anger and the aggression. All it, is te all it takes is for people to genuinely read and see what is in the Bible for themselves. And actually take from it and actually develop, discover that, okay, so God don't want us to be giving all these things that we're giving. God is not interested in all this. Now, let's finish reading the Bible so we can watch our video of sister, um, you know, the video that I have for us today. Okay. Um, okay. So, it says here that, oh, my, this thing has, has frozen. You know, if it is, I would say that the, the devil is a liar. <laughs> so, yes, after that, you know, two blind men received their sight. I've, just after he spoke to that woman, he said, as Jesus and his disciples um, were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting on the roadside. And when they heard Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked him, them and, sh and told them to be quiet. But they shouted out all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. The Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Simple. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received sight and followed him. Simple. Now that's it. He didn't ask them to go and give anything. He didn't ask them to sow anything. He didn't ask them to bring anything. He didn't take bribe. He didn't have to be bribed to do what he's good at. He didn't have to bribe to have mercy. He didn't say, look, any pastor that is telling you to give, to get something from God. That pastor is not of God. That is the truth. 
It, that person is not a representation of Christ. That person is not of, of God. That person has nothing to do with God. That's just the truth. God doesn't take tithes from us today. God doesn't take anything from us today. He doesn't want anything. You want to impress God. I've said before in my previous video, you really genuinely want to impress God, go and start up an hospital. Go and start up a charity. Go and start up a farm, a company that farms. Start up your own, generate your own um, industry. Something that produces something. Hire people, give people work, take people off the street. Don't come to the church pretending. Don't come and pretend for God that you are actually on God's side. Don't come and pretend to God that you're actually trying to serve God by sowing something. God don't fall for that nonsense. That's not for God. When you do that, you've done that for yourself. And that's just the truth of the matter. So let's, let's look at what Andy Funke said. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, when people started talking about, you know, about, you know, people should stop paying tithes. <clears throat> at the time, I think it was Dr. Sunday, um, Daddy Freeze, a lot of people were, you know, on the, using the platform, using the internet to teach people to give, um, to stop giving to these pastors because that is not of God. So Sister Funke, Auntie Funke took it upon herself that she wants to come out and she wants to come and correct people because, you know, aunt, as our lovely Auntie Funke, you know, uh, uh, our auntie, she, she believes that she is the only one that carries an anointing. She's one of those people that started work. Remember when we read? Some people came at very early in the morning. Some people came at night. Now, this is an example of, typical example of the people that came in the morning who now want to come and show their authority that because they came in the morning, they have more authority and they have more understanding and they have more knowledge of what God has to say. Okay, now let us see. Let us not be deceived. Let us watch Auntie Funke very quickly. Don't allow anybody to use your pastor on the internet or a genuine man of God on the internet as to speak. Everything that Christianity represents is being attacked on the internet. Somebody tells you not to pay your tithe. Put that person on one side of the scale. The person that told you to put to pay, put that person on another side of the scale and check which one do you want to be. What value have you added to my life that will be telling me where and how to spend my money? Who are you? I don't want my life to look like yours. What have you done for me that you'll be dictating? What I should do with my money? Excuse me. Well, I take my day. This woman is so Where arrogant. Like, she is so arrogant. She's like, she has no respect. She talks without regard for anybody. I don't know how someone can truly sit under her leadership or uh, under her teachings. I don't understand because she genuinely has no regard for anybody. She doesn't even see you as her equal. In the world where Jesus said that, I am the firstborn of many. Jesus compared him. Jesus Christ compared him and said, look, me, I am the firstborn of many. I am, what he said, what I have done, greater works than me, can you do also? Jesus said all that. And Auntie Funke is telling you about Latipade. She's talking as, as if, no, like, she, you know, she's so special. She has a special anointing that, you know, that you don't have. How can you let somebody stand on a stage and talk to you like that? As if you are not wonderfully, fearfully, and beautifully made with a brain. How can somebody come and talk to you like you are not built with a brain? She comes and she talks to people anyhow. Let me tell you something. This woman carries, look, there is nowhere. Let me just say something. There is nowhere, ain't no place in the Bible that God talks that, that, that refers that children of God have to pay tight. No place. No place that refers to the children of God that exists today. Nowhere at all that we have to even pay anything to God. The only thing we can pay to God is to sow into the lives of the needy. Get the poor off the street. Let us finish watching Auntie Funke and our arrogance. Is that person your pastor on the internet? And then you two, you are writing, writing, writing rubbish, writing rubbish. And then they are calling men of God names. You two, you are here laughing. You are laughing. And you want to sign millions? <laughs> you want to make it? Oh, wow. So she's saying that it is your, it is because you're giving money now. That's why you're signing millions. You, you want to make it. You want to sign millions. You want to make it. She's telling us now that it is because of something that we give. That's why God gives us millions. That's why. And if we don't give, then we can't have the millions because we are against their pastors. We want to make it. So we cannot make it because we are against the men of God. We cannot make it because we are talking, because you're telling the truth. Because that look our foundation in africa is based a lot of things have been based on fear anyway 
Because look, when the colonize, when the col colonial master came and they, you know, made us to take the Bible and they used the Bible to enslave us, they did it and that created a lot of fear. The fear was that if you speak against them, you you'll be killed or, or one rat of God will follow you. They already that fear was built into us from scratch. A lot of us have that's why a lot of people have inferiority complex issues, like they cannot speak out, they cannot be bold. And that is what Auntie Funke is trying to do to you today. What she's trying to do with her message is she wants to she wants to build fear into you. She wants to make you feel like if you ever stand against the man of God, the wrath of God will fall on you. If you touch the anointed, that anointing that she carries, her own anointing is so special that. If you touch her like this, man, like something bad will just happen to you. Or you'll, you'll, st you'll never make it again. Now, that is what a colonial master does when they enslave people. Now, what she's doing with her message is she's enslaving the minds of people. She's enslaving the listeners. Now, if you're wise, you know, let me just play it. Let's just see for ourselves. Even if men of God make mistakes, their cane is not in your hand. <laughs> And in case God uses She's just you a to comedian. punish them, he will throw you away. Wow, God will show you away. Wow. She even says, shut up your mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't forget, we may be stinking, but we are his church. I said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Don't be a member of the gates of hell church. Oh. Wow. She's just turning anything else. Because you can't prevail. Wow. Go and ask people that did it before. Uh -huh. They must end well. Oh. That's your business. And it's this, this gross rascality and irresponsibility is only found in the church. Hmm. You will never hear a Muslim write rubbish about their imams. <laughs> never. Oh my God. You will never find that. This man is coming. Responsible comedy. people. And then we have rascals. And then you said, Amen. What's wrong with you? I'm a matriarch in the body of Christ, and it is my responsibility to bring correction. Did you see how she called herself a matriarch? I'm a matriarch in the. I'm ma as if she's trying to make it sound like this position is so important, like it's something, like it's like it's good or something like. I'm a matriarch. And so what? Mm. So, yeah, matriarch. So, so what? Stop it! And people are clapping for her, as if she has said anything that makes sense. Nothing. Not even one thing can I say that makes sense. All she did there was she came there. She knows what she was doing. She went there to manipulate people. And she did. She delivered her job very well. She knows what she... She stood up at home and said, My Lord, they're about, I'm not sure about. If I don't scare them, they will not shut up. Uh -uh, it's not on me. Uh, I'm from Carol. <laughs> the people will fear me. And she went there. And she did what she wanted to do. She did it. She did it for herself. She did it for in Kotoma Aji and when a lot of them as Yoruba people will call them like people that their mouth cannot stay in one place. People that she just wants to fight for that source of where our wealth is coming from, where our money is coming from. So she thought, let me manipulate the people into silence. Now look, if you're sitting under this kind of lordship, it's kind of where the Bible says that light and darkness cannot coexist. The thing is, if you're still consuming such doctrines. Your mind can truly never receive light. You know why? Because you're still embracing darkness. It's your choice. You can choose to step out, be in the light, and remain in the light, and continue to consume this mentality. Well, as long as you continue to consume this, you'll continue to be in fear. That's why a lot of people are so afraid. As in, I cannot tell you how many messages I've heard of people tell me to be, to be, to be, to be careful. And the sad part is, they don't even know that I'm here. I can't, but I don't care about my life, you know. You know, for me, yeah, you don't understand. For me, to die is gain. It's great gain. God, for me, great gain to die. I don't think I want to live one more day if somebody asks me on this earth. This earth is too disgusting. It's far too disgusting for somebody to want to be. And what's there to hold on to? What's, what's there? What's so, what's, so, what's so great about this life? What is there? There's no truth. There's corruption. Even where people think they will find God. There's only evil there. There's only men of, men of lies. Men who have turned themselves into God. Many gods. They've turned themselves into demigods because they want to get what they will get. In churches, what is that to be proud of on this earth? To die is great gain. It means, yes, I'm gone. Do you know what is sadder than living, than, than, you know, it is to live. For me to live, 
to be silent about the truth when the evil is continue existing it's like you're telling yourself you want to live a wasted life which is better to have lived for truth and die knowing you live for truth or to live a fake life of dishonor when you know what you're doing or you're not actually living you're just existing if some people are okay doing that then good for them so be it carry on living that but you know what this is me so all these messages you, people that listen have been sending me messages that say me i should be careful i want this to go out to you that please stop it because if you want to preserve your life good for you but i'm not here to preserve mine it is a fake life if you're living just so you can get by just so you can so that you can be liked by the world a lot of people are living for people but you know what is sad is the day i die my casket is only this big and you know who's gonna be in there me by myself and you know what's gonna be in my casket with me my legacy my story the things that i did in this world not yours so if you choose how you want to live your life the things you want to live on this earth the truth you want to stand for if you want to stand up and speak against people who are speaking against your men of god before you do that do yourself one favor so that you don't so that you don't actually dish, you don't go against the work of god let me tell you what you should do Spend some time reading your Bible. Give yourself some time away. Spend some time in your closet and do some serious digging. Like, as in, like, just understand it to the core. If you don't understand it, don't, don't talk. Don't say anything because you don't know what you're saying. You're just standing up for, you're standing up for, for flesh. You're standing up for, for, for nothing. And you are the ones that are destroying this world. The reason why the world is what it is today is because of fake ass people who can't stand up and say, you know what, legit, this is wrong and we've got to stand up for it. I saw an interview with Feladro Toye, like, which day? Yesterday. And I was in tears. I'm like, this guy better not become an authority. This guy better never become a power. Because he's so fake, he ain't got no backbone to tell the truth. We need people that can stand for the truth. People that are able to say, I see these things are wrong. They asked him questions. This guy couldn't even answer. They were asking, do you know that people that are gay are treated incorrectly? He was like, I don't know. They asked him, do you know that men of God are treating their, you know, they're fake, they're collecting all these things, they're corrupt. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know. And I'm thinking, we don't need leaders that will be pretending for us. We need leaders that can genuinely talk about the truth and be like, look, this ain't right. These things are wrong. And we're gonna stand up for it and be like, no, this is this is a lie. No, this is this is what's happening. Discuss the what is wrong. That's how we know a leader wants to take us for that. A leader that is happy, a leader that's bold enough to say, things are wrong, and I'm gonna write them. I don't want a leader that will get there. Fladrote is writing on his on his um, Instagram post. He's writing hashtag support anti funke funke and this thing. He is supporting funke. When he gets to become president, he will legalize it and nobody should ever talk about pastors. These are the people that they will bring us that you need people that will bring us up not people that are, that, that are so enveloped into there that cannot stand up against evil because of age we don't need all those fakeness we need the truth we need the truth we need people that will stand up that seriously genuinely stand up for the truth and that's the way it should be this life is is too is too great it's too it's too good it's too great you know, to, you know, if anybody wants to call through, you can, you can call through or you can even join us on the platform. You can just press the, what was it called? The um, plus one button. I think it's a plus one button on, on the thing and join us. Please, please do that. Or you can ring through to Elizabeth Talks Change and I will pick up the call and you can, you can share a word with us. Yeah, I think some people would like to call through. Yeah, so the, I, I have a lot of videos to show us today. Today is video day. I really, really want to show us another video right now. And it's a video of a man you know, who literally, we all heard everything that Funke just said, thinking that she's somebody. Now, there's a man that counters this. I've shown this video before. I just want us to watch it again. I really like this man. Just watch it. At no time did any revival in the history of the church has come accompanied with something to do with money. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? At no point, at no, at no time did any revival come accompanied with anything to do with money at no point at no time in this life now be ordering for today but there's another video i'm going to show us today the guy was talking about how all he ever achieved in his life 
or his greatness came through when he learned the idea of prosperity gospel and he actually said it with his own mouth prosperity and he talked about the fact that it is creflo dollar you know we all know of the story of creflo dollar in america he's been in serious trouble because of this prosperity gospel now this guy is boldly saying because he learned from creflo dollar about the prosperity gospel that's why he is the great he, 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 in that video i've heard of you know a building that his family background were no good but this guy stood up i was saying that his family he was born out of a politician and i don't even believe that story is true he said his father was a politician and you know he said when he and when he came into christianity what he did was he embraced poverty he he chose so he said that christianity equals poverty the guy is sort of, he's not, he, do, he will literally just say anything. And this man just told us now that at no point has any revolution, anything come in life accompanied because of money, which because of some financial support, because of seed. It has never, ever happened in history. Okay, now let's continue watching it. And I will declare this morning that there will never be a in the church until the church is linked with money. And let me tell you tonight, there will Sorry. never come any revival in the church as long as the church is linked to money. Si. À travers la repentance. Revival comes through repentance. Le réveil vient à travers le brisement de cœur. The revival comes through breaking of heart. Le réveil vient avec l'humilité de cœur. With humility of heart. Rien à voir avec les dollars ou les heureux ou les, les roupies ou quelle monnaie. Nothing to do with dollars, euros, rupees or whatever currency. C'est un message qui exploite les pauvres chrétiens. It's a message that exploits poor Christians. Et qui deviennent de plus en plus pauvres. And they become, instead they're becoming more and poorer and poor. Le message de la prospérité a pourri l'église africaine. The message of prosperity has spoiled the church in Africa. C'est plus le même esprit qu'on ressent dans le cœur des pasteurs africains. It's no longer the same spirit that we can feel in, from the pastors in Africa. Ils sont engagés dans une course pour they, s'enrichir. They are engaged in a race to get richer. Et ce qui est navrant, c'est qu'ils demeurent toujours. And the worst case is that they stay still poor. Le message de la prospérité. The message of prosperity. Détourne le cœur des chrétiens. Turns away the hearts of Christians. Des choses spirituelles. From spiritual things. Réveille en eux les désirs de la chair. Triggers in them the desires of the flesh. Ce que veut ce que Dieu veut tuer. What God wants to kill, ce que Dieu veut mettre à mort, what God wants to put to death, nous nous venons faire revivre par un message de la prospérité. Is caused to come to live again by the message of prosperity. Ce message produit des chrétiens arrogants. This message produces Christians that are arrogant, orgueilleux, proud. Les chrétiens qui avaient l'habitude de tourner leur cœur vers les choses yes, spirituelles, no. désormais tournent leur cœur yes, vers... Okay. Now, this guy has said it all. For me, he said it in a way that I can never, ever, ever put it myself. You know, he, he literally was... Let me tell you something. What people don't understand is that... Black people don't understand is that... No matter what we do, you know, we are never going to be accepted in a, another man's country as an equal is never going to happen no matter even if you come to this country and you build your own build to the top and you have your own empire let me tell you something you still stand out you know why you stand out because you're black you always stand out because you're black you're never gonna be good enough hello mr innocent Hello, this Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Thank you for calling. <laughs> you know who he's speaking? Yes, Mr. Innocent. <laughs> <laughs> See, people like you yes. make Christianity very, very, very attractive. Oh, thank you, you very the much. Very, the very moment you made mention of that fella Duru guy. Yes. I, you know, I watched the interview too. I thought I was the one who remarked what he was doing. Oh. He was completely dishonest when he was being asked. Now, the time he made a post about Rwanda, he was talking about some stuff like that. Then he, he just said God called him to actually be a leader. So I replied, I told him that, look, 
they, it was actually religion that actually started that Rwandan genocide. Religion was one of the problem, was one of the basic problem of religion, ethnicity. And those people would believe that God, the Hutus, actually believed that God gave them the power to kill the Tutsi, and they were calling the Tutsi dogs, they were calling them all sorts of names, and they were using the Bible to call them. So I reminded, reminded them, I said, look, these people, they used religion to actually start this thing. And even the, the, the beginning of the division among them by the German colony, and they actually use religion to indoctrinate them, Catholic Church and all this, and tell them that hey, look, you guys, you guys, you guys are, you guys are superior. So when I saw him made that post about religion, I just knew that this guy. Anytime they just call religion, they just call God name. They are just completely dishonest. So why, once he said that, that question they asked him about gay people, he pretended as if he didn't know what was going on in the country. And the lady that was inside, I've forgotten her name. She said, I think something, something, Lila like that, Lila Johnson. Semina, she asked him, like, if I'm, if I'm gay, do you support that I spent 14 years in prison? He dodged the question. He didn't even answer. He won't answer. The guy is, has no honest bone in his body. <laughs> I what? only realized that as well when I was listening to him. I didn't realize it was that bad. I was like, man, he's no different. He's like the younger generation of the leaders that we have there today. He's, never, he's just the same. He's going to just carry the same thing over again. I've watched all his interviews. Yeah. He doesn't have any substance to, to give. First of all, he was asked questions about his policies, political policy. He didn't even answer any question. He didn't even give any concrete. He's just, you know, he's just craving for power. He's just, he's like that. Oh, that you know, just show guys that yeah. just have power and mm-hmm. just show up and enjoy. When I just saw it, I just say, oh, these people. This one should just come out. Please, uh, do you can do, do, are your videos available on YouTube? Yes, uh, I have them. I normally try and tra- I will be transferring them to YouTube, yeah, so that you can have them in YouTube. Oh, yeah, just let me know if you want anyone out there. Most of them are with me, and I can transfer them to YouTube for you. No, I'm talking to people that are watching you. Oh, right? Okay. <laughs> How many people are there? People can go along and subscribe to your YouTube channel. Me, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I've subscribed, but I was I was looking for at some point. I said I wanted to ask you. Yes, please, please subscribe. It's a list. Elizabeth, I know. Just type Elizabeth, I know on YouTube. You'll find me, and then you can subscribe on onto one of my ch- yeah my on my channel. Yeah, very, please go ahead, very, everybody, because I would like yes. to really move to YouTube. To be honest, I wouldn't. I don't even want to. People, people should go to YouTube yeah. right now. Subscribe because see, a lot of people go to YouTube to watch videos, they search topics, to learn stuff, and you, you are very consistent with this topic. It might seem as if they is not doing any damage to them now, to their personality, but these things are going to remain there on yeah. record. A lot of people will see them, and you won't. Know, you don't even know that there are a lot of souls you are saving oh, from thank all you very much. people are already yeah. trapped in this thing. All they need is just one push from mm. somebody. They just need somebody to just say it. So when they hear it, they will just believe it and say, "Look, we have been trapped." There are a lot of people that have been frustrated with this system. I made a post some few minutes ago about a lady who she just she just says she's an atheist now. Mm-hmm. But she's spilling vile words. She's just saying that religious people should be castrated, religious people should be killed, religious people should be poisoned and that. Then we went, we talked, I talked with her, and only to discover that this lady has been scammed by a church and that now she discovered so she just made some little research, some little readings after a few conversations we had and and then she you know she started seeing some stuff she started researching on document and finding out that ah this christianity the whole thing is just the whole story everything was it wasn't that you know and then she became um what can i say is traumatized or shocked with the whole thing you know when when you go deeper into research you discover a lot of things are not you know in place in history and stuff like that but right now she's confessing that she's an atheist why am i sharing this with you because this lady is traumatized. Yes. She's shocked because she has been violated by religion. all those religious cabals and all those things. Right now, she hates religion. So I was just looking at her and saying, ah, sorry, sister. All of us went through this level. I, Me, personally, I went through a very serious identity crisis. I suffered from low self-esteem. I was, you know, I've never felt comfortable in any church at all. I, I wanted to become a pastor. I tried harder to preach on the street, to try to convert people. I was just in trouble. I just wanted to. I wasn't satisfied at all, you know. So when this whole crisis started, if you watch some of my old old Facebook posts, you'll see I was bashing religion. 
I know God is this, God is that. No, 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 this is not adding up, you know. But after a few years of experience, yeah, I learned from other stuff. Like, okay, this whole thing, you know. So I've seen a lot of people are traumatized. A lot of people are shocked by the exploit that is coming from this man of God. They can't believe it, that the story they have been told for a very long time that is being falsified. So you see a lot of people are so bitter today. And this lady, she's just a classic example of a lot of people. All those hate you see coming from atheists today, a lot of people running to become atheists is because they, they, there is so many deception. It is very, very, very difficult to meet a honest religious person today. Very difficult. Most of them, hypocrite. You see them, they'll just go to church, dance, dance, and they will come, they will judge you. Or just watch them, just give them a few three times. You see one, you see this honesty, you see lies, or you see them claiming, oh, they are holy, 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 but the next minute you see them fornicating around, and they are not living the life that they are claiming that they are living. It's very, very, very difficult. So I don't know who is deceiving who here. So this whole thing, people, they are tired of religion, the manipulation, funke with the arrogance. It's just too damn difficult now. Very, very, very difficult. So this whole thing, keep up with the good work, keep on preaching to people and telling them, I like you very, very, very much. You don't know Thank why. You. Because you have this personality, you even though you, you don't portray yourself to be too religious, it, it takes a very serious level of... Uh, what can I say, exposure, philosophy, intellectual capacity to be able to discern the lying spirit in Fela Duritoye because most religious people will agree with him. They will say, ah, yes, the Bible condemns homosexuals. Yes, so we condemn it too. But they don't know that time changes. We're in the 21st century. There are a lot of things that were permissible in the old the old in this. For instance, one of I just saw a post recently on Facebook to a lady who made a post on Facebook. She said that single people should not have premarital sex. They should remain virgin also till they are, they are they are married before they can. I just I, I just told her, I said, look, not even not all people are, are able to even get married. Even some I have an aunt. 55 years old, who is not even married, she's still praying for her husband to come in every day. She claims she's a virgin, I don't know how true that is, but she kept all those things. And I, I told her the example, there is another example of another Nigerian pastor who divorced her husband, she uh, claimed virginity. Now she got married to the husband, there was no more sexual satisfaction because the husband couldn't satisfy her sexually, she wasn't comfortable in the marriage, she demanded for a divorce. So I say all these doctrines, all these... Uh, holy life that people are trying to live, deceiving themselves. They know it, that they are actually deceiving themselves, that they are just living a very hypocritical life. But they are clinging on to these things and using it to judge other people, to condemn them. But, you know, you're not like that. You're a very open person. Now you talk about this fellow. Most Christians will disagree with you. They will tell you that gays should be condemned. I, I, I actually replied him to that fellow. I told him, I said, look, you are not serious because there was a time he was talking about law. He was saying that in Nigeria, that that anti-gay law, the 14 years against gay, that is a law and it should be respected. I told him, I said, look, the, there was a time that slavery was legal. They, they, they say that it is legal. They, they even classify black people as just ab, above the animals, above animals, and it was legal. It was written in the law that they should be owned as property, and that was the law. So are you trying to say as an individual right now in your position, you cannot do anything to change the law? You know, he is claiming that... He's not going to change it because he's not going to rule with... with he's, he's not going to run the pow, the place with, um, how do you say, rational. It's not going to be rational in his thinking. It's going to be religious in his in carrying out anything that he does. And someone that is bound in religion is still in the slave under the bondage of religion cannot be a true leader. That's just the truth. That's the truth of the matter, except a leader becomes a humanitarian. They can't lead us right. Yeah. It's just the truth. And we don't want them. And until people realize, and the funny sad truth is that because he's like that, he will actually get there. Because that's what the people yes, want to exactly. see. Yes, exactly. That's what the people like, the deception, the, the falsehood, the, you know, living according to their standard of what's good enough. Yeah. To them, that's how they measure what's good. And, and that's just the sad truth because people don't measure the standard of good by the standard of Jesus. They measure it by the standard of 
their own understanding of what their pastor has taught them all their lives. And it's just it's, it's just hypo it's, it's hypocrisy. If you look mm -hmm. at the whole thing, it's, it's just hypocrisy because first of all, you here you are, you are not even like you could see it clearly. It was very transparent that this guy is just dishonest. He didn't give any right answer. He's saying that okay, this, this, that, but he was he dodging all the answers. Yeah, he dodged everything, man. <laughs> And, and then he and then he's claiming God. So how 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 do you expect people to to sit down now and see see Christianity as a moral standard for people? They, in every Christian you meet is not they are not living up to it, you know. So it's very difficult for people to learn a lot of things. And I was telling them, I said, look, this the people you are condemning you, the this Western way you're condemning, and some of them are even more human than all these religious people. Absolutely. I was walking the other day to the church. Many people don't believe that I go to. Most of my friends see me in the church. They be like, ah, you know, say, what are you doing in the church? But I see me, I come to teach children. So they, that they were just walking, and then the car, they just, they just parked. They just, the, the front car, the car that was just ahead, was just stopped. I was like, oh, what happened? Just in the middle of the road like that. Ah, it was a bear, though. A bear, the baby bear that was just fell on the road. I don't know from the tree. I couldn't fly. They were just the front car. These people stopped. And a little girl went out, picked the bird, and took it to the bush side and just dropped it there. And then all the cars just stopped. I was like, hey, hey, look, look at these people. You people are condemning them. You think you are religious. And you think you, you will go to heaven and all Europeans because they don't go to church. Their churches are being taught to me. You, you, you come in France, every Sunday you see people walking their dogs. It's the time they eat with their families. It's that time they go to cinema. They spend a lot of time. Nobody goes to church with Churches, all their cathedrals, mighty, mighty edifice, beautiful. There is another one, 700 years old cathedral, born in a building 14th century. There are a lot of them. You see the big, big here. They are all being turned to museum now. They put it. In. People will come and be visiting and be looking at. Them. I was, I was telling Nigerians, I said, look, all these big, big churches that they are building in Africa, ah, uh, Europe did the same thing. All their churches now are now turned to museums and they are being, they, what they are building in Africa is it, not even as beautiful compared to what you find here in Europe. In short, in the, just give it 10 years or 20 years, they will have to renovate it. But this, the building they have in Europe here are solid stones that they used to build them. So what do you want to show these people again? And we're, we're living in 21st century. We're talking about witches and wizards when Europe has already outgrown that. They, they, there was a time here in France, they born about like 150 women on the stick. They accuse them of witchcraft. They set them up, they burned them up. You know that was old in days. This is something of history. But these people have they have they have already passed this stage. Now Africa is still living in that dark age, superstitious mind. We still living there, and our people they don't accept correction. Fear is the old one, like you said about the colonial mentality that is still packed in our mind. They just want to stay there. They are afraid of their pastors. I just posted my worst video on my YouTube channel. Somebody came in and was bashing. He said, look, young girl, you're you're trying, you're fighting dead. Oh. Say you're going to die if you don't stop talking about these people. Yeah, you're the, all they are coming. Exact comment. It's so they're negative coming. and judgmental. And next, they, they, will be, they don't know the meaning of what it means to judge anyway, so I don't blame them. It, yes. It's okay. And they you can could say see, whatever they want. You could see clearly that they are coming they are the fear, they are being trapped by fear. They can't express themselves. You can criticize politicians, you can criticize anybody, but don't criticize the men of God. But I say it's written clearly in your Bible that uh, judge every spirit. Yes. They try every spirit if the spirit is of God. Mm -hmm. So what part of that Bible that is not clear to you? The, 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 the spirit they judge is the spirit outside of the church. They can't judge their pastor's spirit, you oh. see. They can't. They can't judge their pastor's spirit because they believe that their pastor is better than them. Now, if you already have that mentality, there's no way you can call that person out. That's just the truth. Hello, Mr. Innocent. I'm going to have to let you go so that, you know, yes. other people can yes. call as well. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Thank you so to, much. I'll find you on YouTube and people that, are, that want to subscribe to should go and subscribe. So thank you and continue. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Innocent. I really appreciate your call today. You're just a blessing. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thanks to Mr. Innocent for calling us and, you know, sharing with us. Um, it is, uh, Mr. Dewale would like to call. Uh, uh, Mr. Dan is calling. Okay, let's see Mr. Dan's call. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hey, Dan. Up? Hello. Can you guys hear me well? Yes, we can, yes. 
that good, but I'm just taking a little break from work. Uh, oh, okay. And the office. I was listening, and it was just innocent, just innocent, basically just put my mind. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. When you were talking about the Tour of Play guy, because I'm very, very much involved in the politics going on in Europe right now, just because, you know, as a young person, you want to see your country do well. You know, you don't want to be in the West. And every time you hear about Nigeria, it's bad news. Boko Haram, Eric's man, Libya, people are dying. You know, it's just mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. Exhausting. So uh, I watched that interview, too, about the guy. Yeah. And uh, just what you guys said, you know. You know, it doesn't take... I mean, they say common sense is not common, but Mm-mm. it was so easy to spot that this is a person that doesn't have... He doesn't Integrity. have... Integrity. Yeah, he doesn't have the character. He doesn't. He doesn't. I, I, I would say he doesn't have the balls wow. to be able to stand up for the truth. For example, you know, in regards to the issue of you know, Charles was asking him that uh, you know, there's a lot of pastors that have private jets, and then he was like, oh, every pastor doesn't have private. He was like, jets. I don't know. Then, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking like, dude, you know. And it, it, I'm going to be very honest with you, right? Yeah. It's, it's a sad reality, but if you read the 48 Laws of Power, there's a lot that talks about uh, people like you, te- you need to tell you need to tell people what they want to hear. See, Nigeria is a society where if you tell them the truth, they're going to vilify you. You know, yeah. uh, Nigerians don't like the truth. Mm-hmm. You tell them that you know, especially when it comes to poverty, because even before Nigeria became the world poverty capital. I was always speaking out like, look, you know, I mean, there's something wrong here. You know, you can't tell me because you're a Christian, it's okay to be a poor country where almost everybody's poor. And you're saying, oh, uh, I have Jesus, so I don't need to worry about money. You know, Jesus, Jesus didn't mean for you to suffer, you know, he suffered for you. So why should you come and suffer on earth, you know? Being a Christian is fine, but you still have to make sure you are... You are learning, you are evolving, you know, you are doing the right things to develop your country and make life reasonable for people. But I feel these people have been indoctrinated for years, and that's the problem. It's hard to change people who have built up a habit. You know, you have people who were born into this, because I was born into it as well. You know, I used to be a youth pastor in Redeem uh, maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> you know. Uh, all those things where you, you grew up in the church and your parents, uh, you know, take you to church every day, come back to and all this kind of thing. You know, so it wasn't like we had a choice. Are you still there? Yes, I'm listening, yes. Okay. It wasn't like we had a choice of what we needed to do. But when when I got out of the country and then I started working, I started, like, you know, when I came to the West, I, I saw a difference, you know. I started seeing, because a lot of, the reasons why a lot of these people can't see the truth is because they're still in there. Mm-hmm. If they get out of there, they'll start seeing the truth. Wow. It's hard to criticize someone who you are going to listen to every Sunday. You know what I mean? Yes. They have, they have to get out like... Where you have to out completely out. get out. Yeah. If you don't completely you get, out. get out, you can't live for the yeah. truth. It's just the just truth. Like, it's, just, yeah, it's just like an addiction. If you're addicted yeah. to heroin... And you're taking little bits every other day. or every You can't week. speak against it if you're yeah. still doing it. <laughs> you can So, so yeah. they, they, cannot, they cannot see what we're seeing because they're saying, oh, man, this guy's so holy. I see him on the altar. Everybody's worshiping him, you know. But when they step out, then their eyes will open. You know, what you're doing is great, you know. Uh, definitely that Bernardo Rote guy. I wouldn't vote for him even if they gave me ten thousand dollars. Even if they paid me one million. Even if they gave me all the money in the world, I wouldn't. Because no point. And I'll take the money, Sha, actually. <laughs> yeah, and transform yeah, the world with it. <laughs> yeah, we don't need people like that as leaders. Yeah. Because all he's gonna do is just he's gonna be doing uh he's gonna be playing he's gonna be playing romance with the truth is not going to be able to stand up against people like uh, yes. Akebwe, no. Awe, Deko, no. guys, you know. Some of those guys are actually Richard and Dangote, you know, the Yeah, camp. they just hide they their did. millions. They, they hide it. The camp was built at like $8 billion. A lot of people don't know that. It cost about $8 billion to build that whole camp. Because it's like a whole city. Yeah, seven point something billion. Yeah. yeah. If, uh, if a pastor can have that kind of money... <laughs> How much does Dangote have? Maybe 20 million. And he just used that for church. So he's, he's richer than Dangote. A lot of people don't know that. But, uh, it's sad. It's sad. Man. Thank but you. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. 
I thought I should, I thought I should talk about that. I mean, I, I'm supporting Shuri right now, you know. Yes, I'm I okay. think Shuri is the only one that's politically yeah, like getting on. Though. Know, yeah, he's very neutral, and mm -hmm. he sounds like someone who can actually stand for something. Yeah. But, it's um, not balls. <laughs> it leads exactly, people. Did you see exactly. the the thing he led this morning? He led like a campaign. I'm like, is this show? Yeah, is it? Is it? Um, that will lead something like that. <laughs> yeah, that one. That's the kind of it will be like, like don't stand against the the men that are older than you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyway, it's thank you very it's much it's for your time. Typical Nigerian. So let's yeah. let's keep on spreading the message. You know, let everybody keep sharing and sharing. Yeah. You know, when they when they no longer have anywhere to hide, where anytime they go on Facebook, they see everybody talking. Maybe they are will. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you right, so awesome. much, Mr. Dan. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate your comment. You're just a blessing. Right. Thank you for calling us here. Yeah. Have right. a lovely evening. A nice day at work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that was a blessing. I was hoping um, Mr. Adewale can get his call in. I'm going to try and call him. Let's see if, if it works. He was trying to call us earlier and see if he can bless us. I'm really blessed by everyone who shared. I really was touched by Mr. Innocent's, um, you know, call when he said that somebody tried. You know, a lady has turned away out of religion now and she's completely somewhere else. Like she's 18 on Christians and she's saying that you know, religious people should be castrated because of what she went through, you know, in, in in being in that sort of setting. And for me, that is just so sad because if she's feeling like that, that because of, you know, I, someone called me, you know, a friend, you know, had a conversation with me today and it was sharing with me of some of the things that, you know, happening in Nigeria now, you know, they've sort of been scammed. And I was just so sad with some of the sharings and I was like, all oh, this is happening in the church? And the person was like, yeah, all of this in the church. And I was thinking that, you know, this is just one church. I was just so disheartened and so broken in my spirit because I realized that there's a lot of things that are going on that God is not happy with. A lot of things that are messed up in the, in the church, in the body that, they're, you know, nobody is speaking out against because everyone's too scared to stand against the pastors and talk and actually call them out and say, sir, you, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. No, that what you're doing is not for God, it's for you. Nobody can stand up against these people we call our men of God. And if we can't stand up against them, then we can't, we can't be bold, we can't tell the truth. And they will keep exploiting people. You know, that's just the truth of the matter. Let's just watch um another one of... Um, sister, Auntie Funke, Auntie Funke the liar. You know, I was gonna show us a building, but let's just watch another Funke. And today, yesterday, yeah. I was led to take a seat from you. If you have it, please bring it. She said she was led to take a seat from people. Okay, anyhow. I don't know who led how. Because it's not God, though. It. So whoever led her. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Come in, come very fast. Okay, it's just a shame. Everybody sit down and listen to me. It's just a shame. this lady she said that god is expecting she wants men how many five men to come out and sow a seed of one thousand dollars every year for the rest of your life and you know what let me tell you something about this seed is at least when the bible tells us in the book of genesis that isaac sowed a seed you know he sowed a seed the seed he actually sowed was actual, actual seed, as in like he planted something, like he, like, sowed a seed, 
put the seed down, the seed then produced, then the Bible says then is he, he gained, then he became richer and richer until his wealth was beyond. Like, as in, he sowed, and actually sowed, he planted a seed. This guy, this lady is telling you to sow a seed that you will never see the result of. This is not God of God. God has never asked any of us to sow a seed to get anything from him. To get from God, you cannot sow. You cannot sow to get anything from God. Anything any man asks you to sow, that the person cannot show you what you will get. Right then, 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 let me just tell you, that person is, a, is defrauding you. That person is no person of God. That person is not of God. That person is not doing the work of God. That person is evil. That person is a, is, is, is a poison that is about to intox. The person is about to destroy a, a, your world. It's about to come into your world as a jam and put extra burden on your head for no reason. You, if you are in that congregation and you stand up to give one thousand to commit to give one thousand dollars for the rest of your life every year, you don't even know what your next year is going to be like. You don't know what the next year of your life will be like. But somebody's telling you the year that you have not even seen. Maybe that year will be the year you will lose your job or something will happen, and you will still be struggling to pay. There was a lady that was sharing with me here in the UK. Yeah, she goes to church. She was not saying that a little bit. Can you believe they actually called me and you were asking me? This lady, she's a single lady. She's just her and her daughter. She doesn't, you know, she, she really struggles. Even her job self, she's, she really struggles with her job. And this lady is, you know, the little that she makes is she has to pay bills. And you all know, we all know what it's like. You pay insurance, you pay bills, you pay this, road tax, you pay so much. By the time she's done paying all that, on top of that, she has to take care of her daughter with just the little she's getting. And then one... I think it was like a month she missed a tight and then the church called her and they were like um sis we noticed you don't pay your tight this month it's like that monitoring her tight when she was telling me this i was like just so broken in my spirit because i know that since they are, this she, this lady has been struggling nobody has cared to say let us help her let us find out what you need yo you are struggling to pay your rent this month let the church help you no 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 but you know what they will notice is that rent that she has not paid is that rent that is that um tax the tithe that she did not pay last month? They will not notice that she did not pay a, a rent, but they will know that she did not pay a tithe. Why? Is it not fake that we're so concerned about the money that the people bring, but we're not concerned about the lives of the people that bring in the money? Shouldn't the message, shouldn't the church be the people as regards to the building? Isn't it the people that Jesus came to save? Was it the building he came to save or the people? We have truly lost. Everything that has to do with Christ. The message of Christ is no longer preached in the church anymore. The message that is in the church now is the message of self. It's the message of man. It's man-made messages. They have nothing to do with God. God doesn't take money to bless you. I repeat, God does not take money to bless you. You want to sow seed, you want to see results of seed, then actual plant seed. Plant an actual seed. Plant vegetables. Plant you know, things that will germinate something and then you can produce something out of it and then you can bless the world. You want to bless? Bless the world. Bless at large. Any pastor, and I repeat, any person that calls themselves a man of God, a man of wom woman or whoever they say they are, and they're telling you that you need to sow a seed. Let me just tell you something. They are liars. They are not of God. They have nothing to do with God. Let me just read one more Bible verse for us so that you understand why they are not of God. We'll read Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by your works, so that no one can boast for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let me tell you something. It is not today that people have been calling out people that claim they are men of God and correcting them. It is not today. Let me tell you since when it started. It started in the days of Paul and Peter. There was a place in the Bible where Peter was teaching the Galatians that they need to give, they need to become, they need to circumcise their children to be saved. And then Paul had to call out Peter and said, what, what was wrong with you, Peter? You are preaching your wrong teaching. The message of God, the message that Christ taught, says 
There is no longer need for the physical circumcision. There is now the circumcision of the heart. It is not the circumcision of the flesh anymore. It is not that circumcision. The circumcision that Jesus preached is the circumcision of your heart. That you will be connected to God by spirit. Paul called Peter out. And you know what Peter did? Peter humbled himself. He humbled himself to listen to the message that Paul was taught, teaching him. Peter taught him that you need to understand that this is the message of Christ. If you want to teach people, and do you know that the same Bible, the same Deuteronomy that taught the law, the Mosaic law about tithing, is the same one that taught about circumcision. It's the same one that taught about, you know, sacrificing animals. And do you know what? The same correction that Paul had to, if Paul did not correct Peter that you should stop teaching about circumcision, he will probably, Peter will probably preach about Titan as well. But the thing is, Paul was able to call him out quick enough for him to stop it. And he stopped it. He stopped it in listen and he stopped preaching the message. Stop preaching fake messages. But if you have people that you call men of God, then you cannot call them out and correct them genuinely. To call them out, then they're not men of God. They don't belong to God. They are functioning in a class that does not belong to God. There is no body that is above anybody. There's no man that is above anybody. In the class, in the life, in the, in the house of God, in the, in, the, in the farm, in the vineyard, just as we read in Matthew 20, all is equal. We are all the same in God's sight. Those that came in the morning, those that came at night, that the, you know, that the freeze, mayowa, small girls, everybody, everybody that is you, that you're watching, you and Baba Deboye, in the sight of God, you are the same. Each and every one of us, we are on the same level with everybody. There is no greater anointing. So when someone comes to you and tells you, the Bible says, touch not the anointed, remind them that I am also anointed. And I'm not just anointed. I am a prince. I am royalty. I am a king. I am a king. I am a priest. I am not a priest of the tribe of Levite, but I am a priest. The kind of priesthood that Jesus won for us. We read the other day now. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Was it chapter 3? And we thought we read about how Jesus, you know, got that priesthood. He got the priesthood. He didn't have to, you know, it wasn't a kind of, he was, he won the priesthood by giving his life. He gave something that nobody else has ever been asked to give. That's why I said to us the other day that nobody, if God really was to take seed from us to bless us, I swear none of us can pay the seed that God will take. The seed that God will take, that it will not be $1,000. And if you can say you should come out and commit what uh, nothing. The kind of seed that God will ask you, you will seriously... You will seriously, like, you'll be begging God, that like God, eh, but God, no. Like, seriously, the kind of seed you'll be paying, like, one million a, a year. You know, you know, I don't even know if you believe that, that cheap. We cannot pay any seed to get anything from God. Now, anybody that tells you that is preaching something called the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel tells them, teaches them all these bad things. Then they will come and they will come and they will just come and manipulate you with it. But you need to read. If you don't read, you don't discover things. You don't know what they're doing. We need to read for ourselves. We need to study and know the truth for ourselves. We need to know the truth so that we don't, we're not bound by the lies of Antifunke. And people actually came out. People actually came out to give money, to give thousands, to give thousands of dollars. You know, it's just so sad, the kind of world that we're living in. It's just so sad. You know, let's just watch, um, let's just watch this guy. I was trying to, like, you know, but let's just, let's watch him. He's a liar. He's a liar, but we'll watch him. I don't like watching him because the guy irritates the me to the, you know, someone irritates you to the core. Like, I can't stand him anymore because he's, he's so filled with lies. And you can read his body language that the guy is just a liar. He's a liar. He's just a liar. You know, everything that he says is a lie. And I want you to know that for the truth. Because the thing is, open your eyes. Pray. Ask, the, go, ask God to open your eyes. Say, God, give me an understanding. You know, when Jesus went, you know, was going, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can come and help you. You know, the Holy Spirit was to come down, come into us, and actually take, you know, take the place. And actually, you know, come and, you know, help us. You know, not take the place, but rather come and help us. So he's supposed to come and dwell. That means that the Holy Spirit 
is subject to you. Just as the Bible tells us that, let no man say that I am, I am being, I am I'm taken over by the spirit. It says that because the spirit is subject to the prophet. That means that you are the prophet. You are still in charge, but the spirit comes into you to help you. So that means that whatever you want the spirit to do, you can ask the spirit of. So for example, you need an understanding, ask the Holy Spirit to help you with that understanding. But you have to tell the Holy Spirit what you want. That means the spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit, the spirit is, there, is with you to help you, not to control you. So when pastors tell you, give as led by the spirit, the spirit does not lead you. You lead the spirit. When they're telling you, they're turning what the Bible says. They're turning the Bible upside down. The spirit is subject to the prophet. You are still in charge. You can decide to open your eyes. You can decide to see and do what you're supposed to do. Or you can decide to continue to be manipulated. Um, I think Mr. Adewale would like to call us. Let's just, um, you know, listen to what Mr. Adewale would like. To, let's say we can get him, you know, so he can bless us with his message. You know, it's just a blessing to, to listen to him. other people talk as well as myself because I always learn from other people, you know. Um, so let's just see if we're able to get Mr. Dewali on the phone, you know, before we watch our video. You know, this guy um, that I'm about to show us literally has no fear. He has no fear of God. He, he has no, he has no, he has no, literally this guy is like operating in an office that I don't understand his office. I don't understand Fato Yimbo. I don't understand you know, what is leading him. I, I really genuinely don't know. I'm afraid of him. I'm afraid that people, human beings that, you know, are under him because I know what Nigerians are like. I know what people that are in, in depth, you know, in deep in religion, I know what they're like because they're so, when you're so consumed by religion, especially because, you know, especially when you've been there as well, you know what it feels like. You want to know God. You genuinely want to serve God. You want to know the heart of God, but you don't know that the man that you're under is the devil. Is just being controlled. He's being led by his own personal desire. He's I'm led by self, and you know, he's led by um, what's it called? Sorry. Okay, let's watch it. I mean, our offering was ten thousand naira in our lives, and we wanted to we wanted to love the dog. I remember like yesterday. So I'm not one of those people that got into ministry for money. I could say I'm a rich kid. My father was a politician. Lies. But going into full time ministry, I embraced. Poverty because my Can you hear what he said? Going to full time ministry, he embraced poverty. The guy is so full of himself. Like, embraced poverty. This is. Be, look, if you know someone that has the spirit of Fatou Imbo, run. You know what it's called? As in, like, carry your shoe, put on your head, and run. As in, jet out of there with, with this. As in, run. Don't look back. Because someone that carries the spirit are the most dangerous kind of people in the world. They are the, they are the most deadly human beings that you can ever meet. You see, the thing is, they are very ruthless. They are men that are very, very ruthless. These are men that should be locked up behind bars. They are capable of doing anything. I tell you. So be careful of him. Be very careful. It's like a snake. You know, let's just watch what he says. So basically, um, how I got here, was that one day I met a friend. I mentioned the name of the brother to pass the TV in the hotel. I met a friend to a pastor friend who introduced me to Creflo Dollar, the always Can you see? Creflo Dollar is talking about is the people he learned from Creflo Dollar. Where poverty was what was called holiness. Eh, 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 eh. This guy is a liar. I'm from Quara. Poverty is not called holiness in Quara, okay? In Lauren, we're not called we don't call poverty, you know, holiness. He's a liar. He's lying again. The guy is lying. He's a liar. He's, he's just saying anything that he wants to say. Is this in the Bible? I began to study it, but I began to practice it. I began to practice it. And believed it with the whole of my heart. And my life began to move up. Not too long ago, the guy that gave me the material. Visited my house. And when he came to my house, he was like, ah, Pastor Peter, what kind of prosperity is this? I am not at this level. I said, I don't know. You gave me this material. He's even people. confessing. When he left. He's even confessing that what he's doing, he got it out of a material that was given to him. He said as well. He was given a material. Nobody gave it. They didn't give him a Bible. They gave him a material. And then he said, the material they gave him was a prosperity gospel material. Now he read the material and began to live his life according to that material they gave him. And then his life began to prosper, to be prosperous. What, what he's doing is clearly confess that I did not get it from the Bible. Prosperity gospel is not from the Bible. It was a, it was a material that was given to him. And then he said, is this from the Bible? He knows himself that what he's doing is not of God. 
He knows genuinely that, but it works for him because the masses whom he is exploiting are they are too shallow and too they are it's like for example now somebody is doing something bad, but you're not standing up against that person. You're allowing the person. So he knows that these people are so gullible, they will let him get away with it. It works for him. So he carries on doing it. That's how it works. That's how genuinely it works. I'm not supposed to say this publicly, but this is what the Holy Spirit told me. He's lying he again. The Holy Spirit told him. The Holy Spirit cannot tell him anything, even if they pay the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because he's no longer confiding with the Holy Spirit. He's confiding with that material they gave him. He's not getting anything from the Holy Spirit. He's getting it all from the material. Part of the Bible you believe is the one that works for you. I just believe, I didn't have a choice. I just believe dog everything. So I would be hypocritical for me to tell you all the plenty English I told you. I don't tell you my little secret. Given is the antidote to luck. Now, if you are not a given church, there's no way you could do this in your mind. I know you're a given church. But you see, every pastor has their area of strength. You see a medical doctor, their cardiologist, their pediatrician. What I have noticed in my ministry is grace of finance. And I don't want to be bragging here. But what I have noticed in my ministry is that we take money out of money. And I give God the praise for that. And why? What I can trace it to is that I have a revelation for you. Listen to me, guys. What will you do without finance? Tell me. Nothing. If you don't need finance, the one we're talking about, then you're not planning to help you. Middle of the night, on, t on Wednesday's talk, on Monday's talk, Tuesday, somebody sent me a message on my Instagram. Please don't, since I gave this testimony on Tuesday, my Instagram has been jammed. Don't send it to me because I, I work with discernment. This lady had been sick. She's a Christian. Middle of the night, sent the medical report, did everything to me. I just called the music minister and I said, Do you know this person? And anyway, we were verified. And that middle of the night, I said to my between 12 midnight to 6 o'clock, I had helped four people. That is what finance is for. That's what finance is for. Maybe you know about the gratitude in our church. They didn't answer our church. We picked them. We did a talent on and picked them. We didn't give them a car. We brought them, got them a house, got them a driver, got them a boss, put them on a salary. They, learned, they taught them how to swim. They taught them how to... They changed their lives. They've been to, they've been to uh, uh, Dubai. They've been to South Africa. That is such a lie. They've been to yeah. money to do that. Uh -uh. Think about how many people you would like to help. But you can't help because you don't have money. Your salary can do what we're talking about. You need a kingdom dimension of it. So I don't want to belabor this. Pastor does not have a need. This conference has been paid for. You know that. And I looked at all the speakers coming. There's no speaker here that is here because of money.